Wednesday, September 13th, 1848, approximately 4.30 in the afternoon in the small prosperous town of Cavendish, Vermont. Everything was business as usual for the Rutland and Burlington Railroad construction through Vermont's Green Mountains. The foreman, a 25-year-old man named Phineas Gage, is about to experience something that will change the rest of his life. Phineas was respected by his workers and he was good at his job. Others would describe him as businesslike and efficient with everything he did, and he was certainly well liked. You see, building a railroad at this time in history was hard work. There wasn't any machinery to move bedrock, so the railroad workers had to use explosives and hand tools to make their way for the tracks. Phineas specialized in blasting and he was often seen with his custom tamping iron the neighborhood blacksmith made for him. Phineas and his assistant were hard at work setting explosive charges. The process sounds quite simple, but in an instant could prove quite deadly. Workers would drill holes into bedrock, pour black powder, set the fuse, cover with sand, tamp down the charge, give warning to others, finally lighting the fuse and running for the hills. Today was different. It isn't known what distracted Phineas from his job, but the step to cover the black powder with sand was forgotten. Phineas turned to look at something and began to tamp the uncovered black powder and... the explosive charge detonated. The drill hole acts as a gun barrel and propels Phineas's custom three foot, seven inch, 13 and a half pound tamping iron upwards violently. The rod entered through Phineas's left cheekbone, behind his left eye, through the front of the brain and out the middle of his forehead, making its way completely through and landing with a clang 30 feet away. His workers rush to him, assuming that he is dead from what they had just witnessed. Miraculously, Phineas is able to sit up a few minutes later, talking about the explosion and that his head hurts with blood pouring down his face. Phineas is seen quickly by Dr. John Martin Harlow, the town's physician. Harlow is able to confirm that the iron bar went clean through Phineas's head, but much to his surprise, Phineas is still able to talk, walk, and is still very much alive besides some very gruesome details. Dr. Harlow dresses the wound, though he is still very concerned about the loss of blood and brain swelling which alone could cause death. Dr. Harlow's medical notes today are still very important primary source to this case. Besides the brain swelling, what Dr. Harlow didn't know yet at this point in history was that there was another dangerous factor at play, bacterial infection. Robert Hooke invented the microscope in 1665, and Anton von Leeuwenhoek realized that some of these cells might be living, but no one had yet realized that these small living cells now called bacteria can kill. Phineas's open head was the prime location and condition for staph or strep infection. With a bit of luck, lots of changed bandages, and 10 weeks of rest, Phineas is declared fully healed from his wounds. Phineas may be fully healed, but something isn't right. He isn't the same Phineas Gage that he used to be. His mental state now appears to be altered. He is unreliable inefficient at work, uses vulgar language in front of women, and at times is downright nasty. Dr. Harlow kept tabs on him and sadly wrote, His contractors, who regarded him as the most efficient and capable foreman of their employee previous to his injury, considered the change to his mind so marked that it would not give him a place to work again. In other words, his new personality was intolerable to work around. Phineas survived but he will never be the same again. 
Those that knew him before aren't so fond of the new angry and vulgar Phineas. He soon leaves Cavendish for good and is closely examined at Boston Medical School for weeks before he grows restless and leaves. He takes his tamping iron on the road and rumor has it that he traveled from city to city displaying at freak shows for money until eventually he is hired as a stagecoach in New England and eventually Chile. In the last year of his life, he returned to family in San Francisco before suffering more and more seizures, undoubtedly from his injury and ultimately causing his death, 11 years after his tragic accident. Phineas is famous in psychology because his injury changed the way that we understand the brain forever. Before Phineas's accident, it was believed that all of the brain was used for the same function, and if any damage was to occur to any part of it, it would result in death. Neuroscientists and psychologists now have an understanding that there are different parts of the brain and that they have specific functions. The frontal lobe is responsible for cognitive skills, emotional expression, problem solving, memory, language, judgment, and sexual behaviors. Phineas's left frontal lobe was ultimately lost in his accident, and it explains his behavior after the trauma. Today you can find Phineas Gage's skull and tamping iron on display at Warren Anatomical Museum at Harvard University, and you can visit his hometown in Cavendish, Vermont. If you'd like to learn more about Phineas Gage, check out John Fleischman's book titled Phineas Gage, A Gruesome But True Story About Brain Science.